So uh, it is uh, 6.30. We have a quorum. So as clerk of the planning board, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, our chairman is uh, at town hall as we speak, verbally continuing the zoning public hearing to this Zoom meeting later on. And he is also continuing the, um, the scheduled uh, public hearing for uh, Three High Meadow Road to a future date after the emergency is lifted. And he is continued, uh, when he gets back, we'll uh, continue the public hearing for Michelson to a future date. So if anyone is here for uh, Three High Meadow, uh, it will, there will be no substantive discussion of it tonight. Oh, and uh, it looks like Jim is back. He is connecting in. That's a little bit fast to travel. Well, it only took him a minute to, uh, maybe he's calling in. He's, I think he's calling in. So uh, let's start since uh, with our administrative section. Um, I'm, since we don't have a sign-in sheet, I am not sure uh, who is here for what. So uh, if I can just go down uh, sort of in the order of people here on my screen. We have uh, Tom Reedy. We have uh, Amy Brown slash Isabel Brassel. We have Dylan Manns, Karen Golding, Richard Alcorn. Um, who is here for questions and who is here just to see what's going on? Bill, um, I know you have business. Yes. And Richard, I know you have business. Um, and then we have a phone number, uh, not otherwise identified, 582-7040. Bill is here just to listen. OK. Yeah, we are, we're here to observe as well, um, Karen Golding and myself. Yes, I'm just here to listen. Thank you. Okay. Um, Karen Golding is the name that shows up on the screen, so I don't know who else is there. It doesn't matter. I just want to be sure. Um, so Amy Brown. Yeah, I'm happy to clarify, Bill. Um, this is Amy Brown. I am here to observe and watch your proceedings. And uh, Karen Golding is my sister. We are doing uh, both here to observe and to watch the proceedings. Oh, okay. That's fine. Um, so we have one person who is calling in. Um, and I have a couple of chats here. Um, so Richard is here. Alcorn is here for business. Um, uh, I think maybe Jim just turned his computer on or something. Um, uh, so we have that one phone number that is muted, um, but 413-582-7040. Hi, I'm Richard Alcorn. I'm just calling in. I'm, I'm dialed in by the computer, but calling in for the sound. Oh, okay. All right. So you're two, you're two of the yep. folks. Okay, so um, I think uh, we just have one thing for Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School, and that is the, um, the storage shed. Um, and uh, Mr. Alcorn did send us revised drawings or supplemental drawings, which I forwarded around to everybody. Uh, did everyone have a chance to look at those? Yes. 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 Which one? Actually, I will. Uh, Jim is 
is on board now, so I'm going to uh, pass the uh, the mighty gavel back to him. Well, 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 we continue what you're talking about, Bill. I didn't catch that last part. Oh, we're just uh, I just had gone through sort of a a roll call to create a list of who who wants to speak with us about what. Okay. And uh, so we're just ready to. Um, talk with uh mr alcorn appears as richard and as the phone number so he has better sound okay and uh i had sent around the revised uh, supplemental drawings he had prepared oh yeah of the uh of his storage shed yeah okay okay richard you're on yeah um well you'd ask for drawings and i sent the drawings around um there was a concern about the conservation uh, commission and the woman from the conservation commission did come by. I don't know if she got in touch with you. Uh, she only indicated that she felt wanted that there would be um, a barrier. I don't know, hay or something, whether between the construction and the, the detention basin. Um, she had done some research to see whether the detention basin had originally included any conservation land, which I guess it did not. So it, it does not really. Uh, it seems as if it did not fall under conservation at that point. And so she, so she has just suggestions, but I assume she will talk to you. Um, the only question I have is, when I started this, I sort of worked with the assumption that maybe we'd be putting it on crushed stone. Um, I'm uh, glad to do that. Uh, the other option is, and, and I know that there's some indication uh, from the building inspector that he w would like it held down some, or he wanted to... An architect to look at it and do a stamp on it, and so there it, it could be held down with um, um, things on the ground. The other alternative would be to put down a foundation, and I don't know. I wanted to ask whether you have an opinion one way or another about putting down a concrete slab. Is that something that I can do if we want to, or or, or would you prefer crushed stone? I, I don't believe the planning board cares what it sets on. That's really more of a building inspector issue we're more concerned with the aesthetics of it and stuff and so therefore um if you know if the building that you presented the picture you sent to us is what you're going to construct then i think we're good with that part of it as far as, as, far as how it sets it's irrelevant to us that's more like i said that's that's a building issue building code building inspector issue and the pictures were done by the uh, supplier and so I think they're an accurate representation of what we will be building, yes. Okay. We're good, then we should be good. Um, any other comments on the on that particular little storage building? The uh, fire department uh, was okay with it, too. Okay. It's a Most fully sprinkler building, so they're not as concerned about getting rear access. Okay. Um, motion to approve and leave site plan approval on, the, on that storage building? I don't make the motion. All right. Do you have a second? I will second it. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. I will get a, I will get a little note off to the building inspector, Richard, and uh, that may take a day or two, and then you should be good to uh, go after that. Okay. Thank you very much. And okay, I will uh, I will forward the drawings you shared with us to the building inspector. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Who's next, Bill? Uh, Tom Reed. Who's he? Good question. <laughs> the problem with Zoom <laughs> is anybody can get in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good to see everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well, staying healthy. Um, I'm here on behalf of Keith Rabine tonight. Uh, so Keith acquired... The 64-acre parcel, there's actually two parcels. I think it's uh, 10D, parcel 61, and 61-1. It's land off of North Maple Street and Rocky Hill Road. There's no frontage on Rocky Hill Road, but uh, that's probably the closest cross street. Uh, it's the land behind Elaine Manor. You probably remember it. I think it was going to be part of the five college um, book repository or warehouse, depending on what you actually um, consider it. And so- uh, I believe the motion said warehouse. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about that. That's, what That's right, yeah. water under the bridge. Um, 
So, so Keith bought that uh, end of last year with the intent of placing his homestead. So just to build a single family home on probably 62.8 acres of it. So there's, there is um, frontage along North Maple Street. Uh, he has sufficient frontage to actually carve off another building lot. And so we will probably at your June 2nd meeting be bringing an a and in front of you for your endorsement. Uh, it will effectively divide all that land into two parcels, one being a 1.2 acre parcel with frontage on North Maple Street and the balance of the land um, being the other parcel. And it's going to be on that parcel that he desires to build his home. Um, it's the distance from North Maple Street where he has 200 feet of frontage and it's 200 feet, even though it's an AR because where he's looking to put the home is in the aquifer. So we've got 200 feet of frontage on North Maple Street and we're preserving the lot width of 150 feet all the way back to uh, that building to get from North Maple Street to the building site would be about 2,500 linear feet. And there's probably some wetlands implications, potentially a stream crossing, et cetera. Um, this parcel is benefited by an 18 foot wide easement that has existed since 1953. Uh, Edmund Smith and Margaret Clark granted it to Joseph and Francis Wilga. Um, and so what Keith would be looking to do is to utilize that 18 foot wide easement, which comes off of Rocky Hill Road uh, to access his single family home and so therefore not come off of north maple street so it seems to me we need that section 5.7 special permit from the planning board so i wanted to discuss that with you and then also to talk about the the timing of submitting a special permit um understanding that you're not holding any hearings but if we were able to submit it to have it noticed and then to just have it continue to whatever date, kind of that on the bus date where everything's gonna get continued to, there will be that call of list, if you will, to identify subsequent dates. At least then we're not trying to, let's say in, in July or August, because Keith wants us to try to build this house, you know, assuming we get an approval uh, in the next couple of months. Um, so I was just looking, I guess, substantively on 5.7 and then, and then timing with the hope that we could submit a special permit and go through that process. So when, when you do hold those hearings, it's all the procedural requirements are taken care of. Oh, Tom, Joseph Roddick here. Are you dividing the discussion tonight into two uh, various parcels? In other words, one, the ANR, the frontage on North Maple Street, and two, the uh, special permit you're requesting for the, uh, the driveway off of Rocky Hill Road? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the ANR, that's by itself, yeah. Right, right. That that's is going to be endorsed because it's actual non-illusory access on a public way. So I'm not so concerned about that. It, it's more the access over something other than the lawful frontage, um, and looking to utilize a pre-existing easement to allow access to that to that single-family home. Um, so that's that's really the, the question. I, I well, like, go ahead, go. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, you're probably going to take it. My comments that I made to the, I think you heard the last comments I made to uh, about the access of the one out closure drive. And the intent of the bylaw was that, you know, the person would own the land on both streets. In that particular case, that was, there was a lot behind that one off of closure drive. That was a very small subdivision. We waived all kinds of things for this, all kinds of subdivision requirement for that house to go in. And then they come kind of, you know, to use Joe's favorite term, they kind of get a little bit in the nose in the door and they keep coming back for more and more and more. And, you know, they should have come forward with that, with the initial plan in my estimation if that's what they wanted. Would we have granted it? I don't know. I probably would not have been in favor of it because They've got the access off of uh, Middle Street, which is, you know, not a, a horrible, it's not a, that busy of a street usually. I mean, it's not a, by any means a, a slow street. And, you know, that's the way the subdivision is written. 
In a particular case of your client, it's a little bit different. Um, it's that it becomes not so much that they need the frontage on, I mean, they have the front, they have the legal frontage on North Maple, but it also becomes an environmental issue in your case. Right. You know, if it was just a long driveway, put the long driveway in. You know, that's what that was my opinion. I would not be in favor of it. It was just a 2,500 foot driveway. Well, they knew that when they bought the lot. However, being an environmental issue, clean stream crossing, wetlands issue, that raises a different uh, scenario to me. And I would not be against that, that access across other than frontage because of the environmental concerns. Okay, thank you. That's my two cents. I know how the rest of the members would feel. Well, the... The, the other, other part, part of it, in the bylaw, it says uh, not to exceed 500 feet, and this is way beyond 500 feet. So that's 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 not a couple of feet beyond. It's 1,500 feet. So it's a significant uh, difference. And the other thing is that is a very very steep hill to access. Which one, off Rocky Hill or North Maple? One off Rocky Hill. Oh, okay. It's. Uh, it's it's dramatically steep. It's not. It's you know what do our subdivision regulations say? I don't know. Ten or fifteen percent pitch is usually what's allowed, but uh, this is uh, much more. So I, I see several issues. You know, certainly the environmental issue, and the fact is, it's uh, how many feet? Twenty five feet. The right of way, Tom Reedy. Eighteen. 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 How long, would the driveway, right Tom, how long would the driveway be from Rocky Hill to their product to the house? That is a great question. Let me let me see if I can do it quick. <clears throat> you said it was 2,500 feet if they came off of North Maple? Yes. And this lane, without knowing exactly where the house is going to be, but if, if you go to your GIS system and, and you do an aerial, you'll see on parcel 61 where that clearing is. That's where the house would go. And it looks like it's about, you know, as the crow flies, 500 and some odd feet. Let's see if I can trace it out a little bit. Yeah, 600, 700 feet probably is, is what we're looking at. Okay, if it's a steep driveway, without knowing that, that would be a concern for emergency vehicle access. Yep. Because in the dead of winter, it may be a challenge for an emergency vehicle. Sure, and, and we can certainly take a look at that. I mean, I think conceptually, we were trying to get this first step and then the design obviously is the, the subsequent step, which we can come back with. You know, and I think once he gets onto his property, then he can zig and zag however he needs to to make sure that the grades work if, if, he, if he wants to. How, how long is it ballpark, how far from the route from the, how, how, how long is the right of way to his property? That looks like, hundred and six feet, it looks like, off the plan. Okay. I mean, I haven't seen it. I haven't looked. I had a chance to look at the drawing this afternoon when it came through. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Sure, right. sure, sure. Yeah, it looks like 106 feet from Rocky Hill Road to the property line. Okay. Tom, this is this is more of a legal question, but many easements uh, in Hadley were considered agricultural or farm easements, and I remember when it was the McNiff Farm, and that was a concern back then. And Evidently, that was acquired probably as an agricultural easement. So, can it be changed? So, the the language on the the deed is pretty general. It's just a right of way, um, okay. and I don't think that putting a single family home would be overburdening that easement. I think we feel pretty comfortable with that. If he wanted to use that as access for a subdivision, you know, we may be having a different conversation and there's probably some argument that it is being overburdened, but I think for a single family home, there's not, there's no issue. So in your drawing that was presented to us, uh, you had lot one and lot two adjacent to each other. So you're, you had the A&R one on uh, North Maple Street. So you're considering two houses or 
just dividing it into two lots. Frankly, I don't know why it was parcel two and parcel three. I think that should, my understanding this whole time has been lot one exists on North Maple. And then the balance of the land is one parcel. Um, I don't know if the surveyor just kept the assessor's property lines for some reason. Okay, so that's what that line is through there. All right. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where the existing division is. But my assumption probably has two sources of title. Yes. Yes. And so I think that's vestigial. What we'll probably do is just have them redraw combining those. Um, and just making it so this whole parcel will end up being two lots overall. One right on North Maple Street and the other from Keith's house. So will we need a public hearing for the special permit? No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And what, what could potential objections be by from a butters, Tom? Any idea? <laughs> You never know. <laughs> I mean, the fact that something there is going there that's different than what exists currently, you know, and so Rocky Hill, there's potential views. I don't, you know, not being familiar enough where, where Keith is going to site his, his house. I can't imagine that it's going to be of a height that is going to obstruct folks on Rocky Hill uh, from seeing the range, uh, yeah. you know, I don't think, I and mean, it's not heavy traffic, you know, there'll be some construction traffic, obviously, so that, you know, if there's some construction logistics that need to be worked out, but it's really no different than, you know, I think there's a, a house that was just constructed a couple of lots down on Rocky Hill, and I don't know that there were any special provisions put but, in place. But this is a, a legal use of the property, they're not going to any legal uh, Dover amendments or anything to That's say that right to do this, they've got a legal right to do this. Correct. Yeah, so. And I, and I think it's a really good use of the property. Yeah, I mean, I, all the other get, We're gonna get some taxes on it as opposed to, and I saw no taxes from the previous proposal. So that, you know, if this elevation thing can be resolved to uh, our department satisfactorily and everybody else, and I wouldn't have to do it. Yeah. There's some homework to be done on the access time, you realize that. Yep. I get you. Tom, it, Tom, is that the easement that shows next to lot 49? Are you on the GIS? Um, no, I'm looking at the plan where you used yellow to highlight the... Oh, yes. Yes, yes. from Rocky Hill. Because that's kind of a difficult corner there. So you're adding another driveway in there? Well, the, I mean, that's not, that's not the issue tonight. That would be a right. special permit, but that's... That already exists. So we're not putting anything there that doesn't already exist or that okay. Keith wouldn't have a right to. Okay. You know, so if Keith wanted to today start accessing his property off of there, okay, he, he could. Okay. Now, the other question is probably not germane to this discussion now, Tom, but certainly he has a business. Is he planning to put his business in that area as well? No. I. I think he's looking to put his business on Russell Street. If I'm talking a little bit out of school, but I, I think that's where he's looking to put his business in Hadley, though. And not at that site. Correct. If whoever's controlling the house, maybe in that mail attachment, um, if you're looking for the highlighted easement plan, if you go to the mail attachment, Okay, I, I wasn't even sure if this was coming across as the. Uh, now we just see your stream bill, your uh, your yeah, your um, your, your cursor is. Uh, okay. Just uh, it seems uh, screen sharing works. You know, one out of five times. So <laughs> we'll just let that go. If this is a single family lot, Bill, this is probably more of a legal question. Generally, the uh, the, the select board have a, a, a say in, in those uh, access or driveway if it's not safe or what is it going to be kind of delegated to the planning board? Got it. Okay, lost, lost control, control of my phone, phone there. there. 
But Tom, the points that Jim raised are are very valid ones. The steepness of the driveway that I raised, and uh, uh, you know, certainly the, the environmental issues, and you know, it's going to be wetlands and. Uh, it's, sure. And Joe, if I could, my understanding of what Jim was saying, and obviously Jim, jump in. I thought he was saying that in this case, if there weren't any environmental issues, he would make us access this building location from North Maple Street, even though it's 2,500 linear feet. But he is saying that because to use that route, we would hit a stream, probably some natural heritage and potentially have you know a take or some other uh, division of fisheries and wildlife issue that in this instance, he would be okay with, you know, barring the steepness and the other safety concerns of coming off of Rocky Hill Road, he would be okay with this section 5.7 special permit um, allowing us to access it off of Rocky Hill Road. Jim, is that a fair characterization? That is correct. Okay. Yes. But again, you know, jewelry is a point of steepness and, you know, how can that be addressed? I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, that, that we'll take, I'll walk the site tomorrow. We'll, we'll take a look. We'll figure it out. Okay. Watch, Watch out for ticks. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> so the, the decision before us tonight uh, is number one, the A and R lot obviously on North Maple Street can be approved, so it can be signed. And uh, but do you do we have to say it has a valid enough point to schedule a special permit because that is the exception, not the rule, according to our zoning bylaws. Well, 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 all we're looking to decide tonight is, are we uh, violently against the access off of Rocky Hill? If we think it is at all feasible, then time is looking for that direction. If it's, even if it's remote, even if it's at all feasible by the board, then he would like to pursue that option, taking all of the I, the the potential hazards into consideration. But if we're totally against it, he won't pursue it. And my two cents is I am not violently against it. I'm willing to listen because of the wetlands and the stream crossing and stuff like that. Um, sounds like Mike is, sounds like Bill is kind of open. Um, but, sounds but like let me ask, what, have, has no one else in town had built a house and had to deal with wetlands issues and have they have spent the money to deal with those issues? There are a number of houses in town that have had to deal with wetlands issues. So what's the difference here then? Well, the, those, those, those houses had routes to, the one I can think of is there's one off of Farm Lane where they were looking for Correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, was near the upper end of Farm Lane near the hill where there was like yep. a big lot. They yeah. had a small buildable land a plot or piece in the middle at the far end of it. And I believe they were looking for access off the upper end of far of uh Kazera. 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 Kazeras. Okay. Because there was all kinds of wetland issues to get off of their frontage on Farm Lane. Yes. Yeah. So I, I know that you're, you know, you said that uh, one of my first meetings, Jim, you told me that we don't set precedents at planning board meetings. But I guess the question, but my question is, are we setting a precedent by allowing a waiver for a wetlands issue when in fact we haven't done it in town before? We're not, there's no stuff, like again, every, every, to, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to quote the law. <laughs> Mr. Dwyer keeps giving me grief about that. But zoning decisions typically do not set precedent. You right. can't be arbitrary and capricious. You have to have reasons for your decisions. All right. And the one off of Farm Lane, we had a reason. They were avoiding a wetlands issue. They came in a different area. Um, this one is a little bit similar. They have a wetland issue that can be avoided if they come off of a different location. Like to get the length of the driveway to me is not that is not important or the I hate to say it the cost of it even. Um, but environmentally 
that raises some different concerns and it appears yeah, well, but but I, can it, because we're, we're gonna support the fact that go ahead mike well let, i would i would support the fact we should do a special permit the reason the reason is for example it's a, i say it's a steep hill how steep is it what is the pitch is it 10 percent 20 percent or is it five percent or seven percent so we can get some more information and we do have uh, regulations according to our subdivision in the town has certain regulations according to driveways the other thing is too we don't know about the the uh wetlands issue and tom is schooled enough to 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 probably go before the conservation commission to see if he really does have a chance to go to go before us for a special permit the third thing is uh there have been issues with the uh, spade toad frog as far as a uh, endangered species and that's certainly a wetland and the spotted turtle those two uh, things sometimes can be deal busters as they were off of shattuck road for the subdivision where they lost or lost due to the spotted turtle and then the other one uh, close to will build the wire lives was the spade toad frog they have to move the house so uh there are issues and i think if we if we can discuss the issue in a special permit situation where we'll have things hopefully with drawings in front of us and probably a little bit more wetlands delineation we can make a more intelligent decision rather than shooting the hip. we're also making a favorable economic decision on behalf of the person that's asking for the special permit and we're saving him a lot of money if we grant the special permit so is there a quid pro quo here i mean five college inc was gonna They'll have walking trails there and everything else. Can we get, uh, is he willing to uh, give, give the town something, Tom? I don't think this is private property. I don't think we want, I, I would not be in favor of seeing walking trails on that area. I didn't say that. He'll give, Matt, Mike, he'll give you his tax dollars. He'll build a beautiful house and, and pay some taxes for it. Uh, we're we're going to be saving, uh, what are we going to be saving, $150,000? I have no idea. I mean, so, <laughs> there is another factor to consider that really ties in with what Jim was saying. The uh, Conservation Commission really doesn't want to hear from you about needing to cross wetlands if you have another option. Okay. So, um, yeah, if there's if there's two ways of doing it, and the the one around the wetlands is more expensive. The Conservation Commission doesn't want you to take that or but, but, whatever. They just don't want but, to. Their job is protecting wetlands in their eyes. Yeah, but, but if, if, if we don't give him a special permit to do this, then he doesn't have another option, does he? That's, then he may have to go to option back to plan A. Right. So, I mean, in, in a nutshell, Tom, it sounds like, you know, we're, we're not saying absolutely no we're saying we're going to we want to see what see the options see sure. the ideas you know you'll need to get a probably some kind of flagging is there really wetlands issue there i think it was done i think when they did looked at the uh uh the book depository the, 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 the storage annex the book storage that i believe they did some flagging of wetlands there they, yes. that should still be valid yes and I mean, a simple look at your GIS, if, if, you, if you take a look, I think you'll be able to see coming in off North Maple, you know, there are, there's blue lines crisscrossing, you know, the site. So you know, I think, I think, um, and then a little where he's looking to come off of Rocky Hill, there's, there are no wetlands. So I think, you know, you know me well enough. I, I've heard the issues. We can certainly put together something that hopefully will convince all of you that this is uh, a good idea can be safe uh, as non-precedent setting because we've given you enough reasons why this is distinguishable and, and then you can grant it um, sometime in the future. Just a quick comment on your thing to start within a couple of months. I highly doubt that is possible. Okay. Given the state of the emergency and everything else that we've got. Um, I mean, it sounds like the uh, Baker's plan of uh, his phasing these public hearings may be part of phase three, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. 
And that's probably not going to be for another probably four to six weeks. Um, but that remains the best provided everything that he's got going on works well. Right. And doesn't raise it, you know, we don't get increased in case again, et cetera, et cetera. So remember when, when you're figuring occupancy between the five of us and uh, John operating the camera, we've got six people in the room to start with. Yeah. Um, we add you, your client, we're up to eight. And if any of the neighbors come out, we're over the 10 person. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I think we're okay with that. I guess one of the things is if we could get the special permit, you know, the application, the, the plan, at least in to notice it for hearing so that when we do come out of this and you have all of, you know, the backlog of all those hearings um, that you've just been continuing, that we're on that list. So we don't, at that point, just end up submitting, then just get to the newspaper, then just get marked up for hearing. That, I guess that's that would be the request. We are not we're not accepting any applications right now. We've got a backlog of people waiting to submit. Okay. And it's it, you know whether you're you're talking a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we kind of got an organized. At least I have some kind of an idea of the backlog of who's coming in. So once we can hold a public hearing, I will go by the list of what we've got of people that have talked to us on submissions. Um, I don't think anybody's holding back. I mean, it's only, there's only one in front of you. Okay. Okay. And that's, a, that's an accessory apartment right up here off Lawrence Plain. Okay. I'm not aware of anybody hiding in the bushes waiting to submit on anything. Um, it's not exactly the economy people are looking to, uh, right. to do a lot either. So, okay. 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 I've got my marching orders. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Good seeing everybody. Take care. Bye. What else is Bill? Bye. Uh, probably should just go through the um, the continuations. Okay. We've got uh, a continuation. We've got the. Uh, was it the, oh yeah, Julius and Marilyn Gungersheim for the special permit for the accessory apartment at Three High Meadow. That was scheduled for today. Um, obviously, obviously um, I went to the town hall and I continued those hearings to a date for a future date um, to be announced. Kevin Michelson has been in contact with myself and well, actually, I think his attorney has too, more than anything. I mean, not him, no, attorney for the other people, but he requested a public hearing date of August 18th, 2020. And I told him I would reserve that date for him, provided that the state of emergency has been lifted and that we can hold public hearings. We need a motion for that, Bill? Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, probably should do a motion to accept his request to okay. extend. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept Mr. Kevin Michelson's request for a continuation for his access special permit, accessory apartment at 18 Grand Oak Farm Road to August 18th, 2020, pending that we can hold public hearings. I'll second it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Right. Okay, passes unanimously. Okay. Um, yeah, he, Mr. Michelson, had been in contact with me. He's uh, asked asked a couple of questions. One of them was if we had ever turned down any accessory apartments. I said we have not refused any, but we did have one that was withdrawn, I believe, on Cross Lane because of opposition for the neighbors, so they didn't pursue it. Um, and he's had, uh, he's in a bit of a disagreement with some of his neighbors, leave that as, as such. And his attorney, Michael Pill, not his attorney, the neighbor's attorney is Michael Pill. And they are working um, through Mr. Pill. I was speaking this afternoon with Greg Bish from the 
Board of Health, and I asked it if there was any um, any news from Michelson regarding septic design, and Greg said he had heard nothing. Yeah, Miss, would you have a letter from the Board of Health rescinding their approval of Mr. Michelson's septic thing because of the expiration of the inspector's license? Uh, Mr. Pill, I mean, uh, Mr. Michelson did ask me or did inform me that he was going to hire an engineer to uh, inspect the septic system. And that's where that stands. Well, the, Jim, again, not to be talking about precedent, the fact that we have never denied an accessory department has no bearing on any future application, does it? That's correct. Like I said, the big thing about denial or acceptance is if you deny something, you cannot be arbitrary and capricious. You just can't say, I don't want you to do it. You're going to have reasons for it. Um, what was the comment that you made last time, Mike? Past performance does not predict <laughs> the results. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, um, anybody else for general information? Then uh, we'll go with the public hearing on the zoning um, bylaws. And I will try to be brief here. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing Tuesday, May 19, 2020, beginning 6.45 in the second floor conference room of the Hadley Town Hall. I went to the town hall and I continued that meeting to the Zoom meeting today that we're having here right now. Purpose of the hearing is to review the proposed amendment to the Hadley Zone Bylaw. On Zoom, amend Zone Bylaw Section 5.4, parking requirements by changing the amount of area required for industrial uses in the industrial zone. Number two, I'm in sections 25 and 28 of the bylaw by adding verbiage with the Hadley Affordable Housing Trust Fund in lieu of affordable housing provision. That will not be in a town meeting warrant, so we won't discuss that. Um, I'm in section one by adding a definition, definition section 1.2 and amend various other sections of the zone bylaw by removing definitions which will now be in section 1.2. That will not be under the uh, or that That's right, though, right? Correct. Those, yeah. At our last meeting, we, we agreed with the moderator to, uh, to pull those two articles as not being critical. Right. So we'll only have the amending parking in the industrial zone, which is a zone bylaw. And the general bylaw that we're not even going to talk about. I mean, it's not part of the public hearing. We can talk about it if we want. The complete text of the amendments and its own bylaw may be viewed in the town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, May 1st and 8th. Okay. And the parking requirement the zoning in the industrial zone. Um, I'll just briefly hit on that. I'm going to give kind of a little bit of a same similar presentation at town meeting is that several times we have had industrial build proposals come in for an industrial building and the uh, for site plan approval. And in both cases, they had adequate parking for, or they had adequate space to provide the parking for the size of the building. Um, one, one of the buildings was never built. The other ones that are in, uh, obviously, the industrial park have been built. And the one that wasn't built, they were proposing, I believe, about a 40, was it a 40,000 square foot building, Joe? Remember that old medical? Yeah, HBO McKesson. Oh, yeah. HBO, yeah. That's what they were originally located, correct. It was about a 40,000 square foot building. They were going to have about less than a dozen employees and a few visitors. They needed parking for about 20 cars. However, under the bylaw, they would have needed to, they needed to provide 80,000 square feet of parking. 
they had a big enough parcel to put the reserve parking in. That was okay. But in the scope of things, if an industrial process building only, it was, you know, you're not getting any, we're getting very little tax money on this unused uh, parking area and just, just a big green lawn. We kept, we'd get far more money if we had a real industrial building and parking that they require. And that's the whole in, intent behind this bylaw is that put in enough parking to meet the need because industrial buildings typically don't need oodles of parking because they have employees and usually very few visitors. And we stand to get a lot more tax money out of more buildings on the property than just green space when they're not even going to be used for anything. And it's only for industrial buildings. If it's a business use, it doesn't qualify. I think the owners must realize that they're putting themselves in a little bit of a, uh, some handcuffs on them because if they ever want to sell that particular piece of property, and I use the example of Amazon and their, their little vans, uh, they would need more parking and they would not be able to sell that property even though they may get a very lucrative offer. So uh, that that's the negative side for the uh, for the next generation perhaps to worry about. That's a, that's a business decision though. Yeah. But if their site had the space for additional parking that they didn't develop because of the industrial the reduced industrial requirements, isn't that something that they could, or are you saying if they bought a site that was sized smaller? What I'm saying is go back to the building that was 40,000 square feet and they, 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 were, they were required to put in 80,000 square feet of parking. Yeah. I think they only needed, if I remember something like 15,000 square feet of parking to meet their needs. Yeah. So therefore an acre and a half parcel would have sufficed for them as opposed to a three acre site. Right. So the acre and a half would indeed uh, be limit the future use of that property. Right. Okay. But like to Mike's notes, no, that's that's a business decision, and I'm not sure. Can we, Bill? Can we require deed restrictions on some of this stuff? Uh, I don't think so, and I don't think we need deed restrictions. Um, it'll always be subject to the zoning. Um, you got a non-conforming use in there, you can't make it more non-conforming. So, uh, okay, I, I think it's fine, and and the it may change the other way too. You don't want to restrict the use of a property to something that is later allowed. Right. Yeah. So, Mark, we did not require the additional parking that was within our jurisdiction, but it was the green space that was available and it was so calculated in the drainage, et cetera. So at any time, if they needed more parking or another business needed more parking, it was available to them. Right. Yeah, that's, that's where it was uh, something... Langley Ford or something like that? Yes, that's, that's who it was. Yeah, it wasn't HBO. Oh, it was, yes. uh, that's right. Uh, they wanted to move from Amherst to Hadley. Right. That's where we worked up the concept of reserve parking, mm -hmm. which is to say that we don't require that you pay anything more than you're going to use. But in order to comply with the bylaw, you have to have the other space available. You can't put up a second building there. And you can't count it as your green space. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, that's fine and dandy for somebody that wants to plan for the future, but somebody wants to plan for right now and get as much as they could out of a parcel, you know, like I said, instead of using three acres of land, they're going to use it roughly an acre and a half, put up a building. Now you still have another acre and a half to put up another building that, that could provide more potential tax money for the town. Yeah, and bear in mind, these we're specifically talking about changing the parking requirement for one class of business in the industrial district. Right. So um, you're not gonna have 
bumping up against residences. Um, well, and as Jim says, this this makes economic sense from a tax perspective for the town of Hadley. Yeah, I agree. Not not wasting wasting. I mean, it's not like we have an oodles, oodles, we not like we have oodles amount of industrial land that we have to worry about this going up. I mean, it's, it, we were limited on our we're limited on our accessible industrial land. We have a decent amount of industrial land zone, but much of it is not accessible for a bunch of reasons. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes. That's it. Motion. I'll make a motion that we recommend adoption of the bylaw to town meeting. Second. Second. A motion to second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other? Anybody else? Any? Any no's? Motion passes unanimously. Um. What else have we got? That's it. Uh, we, we could, could do, do a reorganization of the board. board. Yes. I recommend that Jim Maximoski be chairman. Se second. Any other nominations? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. I next recommend Bill Dwyer as clerk. Does he have any <laughs> second? <laughs> any other nominations? Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And I would like to recommend that we hold off on the other appointments, the CPA, the Pioneer Valley uh, people, until probably after the town meeting, because. Uh, if some people may be interested in in, in the position on the Community Preservation Act, I think it's fair that they have some time to look into it, see what it entails, so they can either refuse or accept if their name is thrown out there. Okay. I, ha I have recommended to uh, David Nixon, I'll recommend he probably on town meeting floor that to get this uh, trust fund committee off the ground, the planning board will volunteer to be the, the trust fund trustees um, for the time being, just so we can have a committee, a, a trust fund committee by the trustees right away to get the money into the town coffers. Is that the Affordable Housing Trust? Yes. Uh, yeah, it does it to have a select board member on it? It does, it does have to have, have a select board, board member. Board member. Board it, it, uh, it, the board is appointed by the select board and it has a select board member on it, which, which I think is the only specific requirement. No, I had sent a copy of the statute around a while back. but One planning board and one board of selectmen member. And then other members at large, or you can have more, more than minimum of five, you can have more than five and... There's nothing to say that couldn't all be the planning board to make up the, the other the balance. Now, like I said, that, that's initially just to get a board of trustees to get the money into the town coffers, and then they can start looking for other people down the road. Yeah, that makes sense because we're up to speed. We're more up to speed than anyone else about what's involved with this. Yeah. It makes sense. So I agree. Um, that's all I have. That's, I have nothing else. Anybody have anything else? I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate Joe Zagronic on his re-election to the board and during his 45th year. And I would say that his insights tonight prove that his membership on the board or perhaps more important, more important than ever. I'd like to point out that he got a majority of the votes at Hadley, 54 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some other some other people that won town elections did not get a majority of the vote. I want to point out. So even though the reporter from Daily Empire Gazette said you edged out 
the opponent. I think that was a little editorializing. I think you have a mandate to continue your good work, Dr. Zagranek. Thank you for your kind words, Michael. You reiterated just as I wrote it down. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? I have nothing else. I'm assuming we will do a Zoom meeting for our next meeting. I mean, sure sounds like it. I think it's going to be relieved of, of the uh, requirements for at least another month or so. Wow. So, the, uh, I know we can all get a haircut probably in a couple of weeks. May a member um, of the public ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, when is the next meeting of the planning board, please? I believe it's June 2nd, right? We meet the first and third Tuesday of every month. Including summer months? Yes, all year round, unless it's okay. a holiday. Or even, unless it's a holiday. If it's an election day, we still have a meeting, but we just can't hold a public hearing. Right, right. Understood. Thank you. Um, as a, another point of clarification, did I hear earlier in the call, maybe I heard this incorrectly, that there is, this is rolling into a ZBA meeting, or did I hear that incorrectly? No, it is not rolling into a ZBA. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Um, if, you have, if, if you have any questions on the ZBA meeting, um, you can call the building inspector's office. They're kind of scheduled through that office. Terrific. Thank you. Thank, thank okay. you very much. Um, anything else? Um, June second. Do we? Is that any uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission or no? I've forgotten when we put them off to. Um, I don't think we. I don't think we set a uh, date. We just set another date for a meeting with Ken. Um, he was going to work on getting the contract to us. And a few other little things. We haven't set another date for him. Right. Well, I'll get in touch with Ken and find out when you know when do we want to touch base with him again. Probably the I would think maybe the third third Tuesday of June might be a better time, Bill, because we really don't have a lot to talk about yet, unless he has a contract. Okay, I'll um, uh, I will try to find the. Um, and send around again the uh, work program okay. uh, items that he had. Uh, he, he had collected the uh, the work program for the last ten years or so, and there were a lot of things on there that, as I looked over them, we never got to them. But they were uh, things we'd like to maybe revisit. But I'll send that around. Okay. Excuse me, Jim, one last question. Um, meeting minutes, are they approved by your board? When I get to them. Okay, and are the agenda items on your, are the meeting minutes part of an agenda item and accepted into the records? Yes, they will be when they're, when we get to them. Okay, are they also posted um, publicly and online for access to the public? Uh, by the public? If you, uh, at the moment, they exist in the form of my handwritten notes because we have no staff and I have no way, I, I just don't have enough time to get them out. If you would like to see the minutes, uh, I'll be happy to scan my notes to you at any time. But Amy, Amy, you can, uh, uh, our television, we're on television now, uh, can give you a live, recap of our meeting too so you can request it that way it's probably a little sure. Sure. no i can appreciate that i think you know meeting minutes are certainly the most um ex expedient way to review what's happened in, in any public board meeting so thank you appreciate that okay so that, 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 that being said just getting back to the fact that these are broadcasts let's assume that meeting minutes were drafted and we voted on them and we approved them. And let's assume someone went back and watched a one of the recordings and said that, well, this should have been in the minutes. Do we have to go back and amend the minutes? Oh. Well, the minutes the official record of the meeting. It depends what they say should be in the minutes. There is the state requirement for taking meeting minutes is specific. 
Well, what, wasn't there an issue with the property off of Middle Street and Kosher Drive that something was let out, left out of the minutes that was perhaps important? That was the Zoning Board of Appeals. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, I uh, do not. I do not make verbatim accounts of lawyers' closing statements necessarily. Um, we're just supposed to have an outline of what we decided and the basic reasons why we decided something. So, Wasn't there a? Uh, weren't we trying out to see if John could draft up? We uh, that prop that that had a flaw in it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, nothing to do with John. Um, it's just, just a question of what's important, what is you know? you know, uh, it? It's, 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 it's a, a personnel, personnel matter. Uh, I can explain it privately if you want. But it's, it's no reflection on John. No. Okay. Just purely a ruling from the, the HR department. Okay. So, uh, I to our visitors, I am uh, happy to add you, I have a fairly extensive mailing list for the agenda that goes out usually the Thursday or Friday before the next meeting. Um, and I'm happy to add to the agenda, to the mailing list, anybody who is interested in getting a copy of the agenda. If you would like to get a copy of it, just uh, drop me an email at planning at hadleyma.org and um, just ask, ask to be put on the mailing list for the agendas, and we will add you to that. Very good, thank you. Uh, so if that is it, I guess I can end the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, meeting is history, and thank you, and thank you, John. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.